Hello, welcome to another exciting Unity tutorial with me, Romy Fauzi. In this video, we are going to create a third-person controller using Playmaker. And this is what we are going to create. So here we can move the character around and we can rotate the camera using the mouse. And the camera is controlled by the Cinemachine controller. Okay, so let's jump to the tutorial. So let's create the third person control here. I have a new scene and inside of the scene, I have a new camera and also directional light. I've also imported the Playmaker add-ons and also I've import this environment, the forest tree for testing later and also this uh, medieval cartoon warriors. And it also have animations in it so we can just use the animation right away for controlling our character. So now let's go back to Unity and I'm going to create a new empty game object and I'm going to reset its transform so it's centered and let's just call this player and I'm going to add the character models as a child of this player game object. So I'm going to open the cartoon heroes folder under the character prefabs folder. I'm going to drag the male C game object here. And now if we zoom in here, you see that we have this character. And I'm going to remove this script here from the character because we don't need this. And the script is basically for customizing the character. And let's just unpack the prefabs. Okay, so for the player game object, I'm going to create a new capsule collider. And I'm going to set the height to around 1.8 and set the center to 0.9. And for the radius, I'm going to set this to 0.25. And now it fits nicely with the character model. And the next component that we need to attach is the rigid body component. And for the rigid body component, I'm going to freeze the rotation, all of the axis, because we are going to change the rotation using the FSM, so we can just freeze this rotation here. And I'm going to create a new cube for the ground, so the player can walk around using this cube here. So I'm going to reset its position and I'm going to set the scale on the X axis to around 25, also 25 on the Z axis. And for the Y axis, I'm going to set this to 0.1. And for the Y position, I'm going to set this to negative 0.05. So half the value of the Y scale here. So the surface aligns with the zero position of the Y axis. And for the directional light, I'm going to enable the shadow. So let's just enable this soft shadow and we should be able to see it here okay i'm going to open my project settings here and check if we have disabled the shadow okay i'm going to enable the shadows and for the resolution i'm going to set this to medium here okay so now we have shadows on our light here and we need to enable the shadow so we can see it better when the character is jumping. And make sure you also import the Cinema Machine. You can open the Package Manager under the Window menu and search for Cinema Machine. And if you haven't installed this, just press Install button. I've already installed it, so I don't have the Install button here. And now first, I'm going to create the camera for this character. So under Cinema Machine, I'm going to create a new free look camera. And the free look camera here, the free look camera game object, I'm going to assign the follow and the look at to the player. So I'm going to direct the player to this slot here. And now you see that we have three circle shape here and this define the movement of our camera. So I'm going to change a couple of settings here. First, I'm going to set the bottom rig height to one. So this is basically the bottom rig and this is the radius where our camera will turn around. And I'm going to set the radius to three for the bottom rig and for the middle rig I'm going to set this to 2 and set the radius to 4 and for the top rig I'm going to set this to 3 and set the radius back to 3 so we have this uh, curve camera here and here under the top rig middle rig and the bottom rig settings I'm going to change the track object offset y value to 1 on all of these rig settings so let's just set the top, middle, and the bottom rig track object offset Y to 1. And I'm going to set this 
both screen X and screen Y to 0 0.5 on all of the option here. Now, if we press play, you see that we can move with our mouse. We can move the camera with our mouse here. And as you can see, we can rotate and we can go up and we can also go down. So now we have working camera. Let's create the FSM for the character movement. So I'm going to open the Playmaker window here. I'm going to select the player and I'm going to add a new FSM on the player game object. And here I'm going to call this movement. And inside the movement here, I'm going to change the first state name to also movement. And I'm going to add a get axis vector. And this is basically we'll get both of the horizontal and vertical axis and it can map it to a plane. And we want to map this to uh, X and Z. I'm going to set the multiplier to around uh, three right now. And then I'm going to save the resulting vector to a new variable. So let's just call this movement. And then uh, we want to get the XYZ value from the vector tree. So I'm going to use the get vector tree XYZ. And let's just insert the movement variable. And we want to extract the X and Z value. So let's just call this X speed. And let's create a new variable for the Z value here. And let's just call this Z speed. And let's make sure we enable every frame here. And we want to also use the set velocity action. And I'm going to set the X speed to the X value of the set velocity and the Z speed to the Z value of the Z component here. And set the space to world and make sure every frame is checked. So basically this will move the character using the rigid body and we don't want the Y value gets overwritten. That's why I've split the vector into this component here. So we will keep the Y value to none on the set velocity action here. And let's save this. If we try this now, you see that we can move the character. but the animation doesn't play here so in order to make sure that the animation plays i'm going to select the child game object here and i'm going to replace the controller here so i'm going to pick the third person controller that i've already created and i'm going to explain this in a bit here if i select the male c game object and open the animator window here you see that this is actually a very simple controller and this is actually a blend tree that consists of the sword stance animation and the sword walk animation and basically this value gets driven by the speed parameters and if the speed is zero then it will play the idle and if it's one and it will play the walk animation and i also add the boolean parameter called grounded and this trigger the jump animation so from any state I've said that if the grounded is false then we want to go to the jump state and from the jump state we want to go back to the idle move blend tree here if the grounded is true and for all of the animations i've set the transition duration to 0 0.15 and the jump animation is actually looping so it will stay on the jump animation until the grounded sets to true again and now here on the movement fsm we can add an animator set float here and we can just specify game object for the animator game object here and drag the child object and for the parameter it is called speed so i'm going to change the speed value here and we need to grab the magnitude from the get axis vector action here so i'm going to store the magnitude value to a new variable and let's just call this move magnitude and i'm going to assign the move magnitude variable to this value here and let's make sure the every frame is checked. Another thing that we want to set is we want to set the direction of the game object using the smooth look at direction. And for the target direction, I'm going to pick the movement vector. And for the up vector, I'm going to disable the use variable button here and set the Y value to one. So this will rotate the character along the y-axis here and we don't need to change anything else here 
Another thing that we want to change here is the get axis vector and we want to set the relative to to the camera game object here. So our movement will be relative to the camera. And now let's press play and give it a try. And now if I move here, oh, as you can see, we are jumping because we have the rounded boolean set to false by default. So to test this, let's just check this to true. And for the child game object, let's make sure that we've disabled the apply root motion here. Now let's give it a try again. Here, as you can see, now if I walk, the character will play the walk animation. And if we move sideways, it also rotate to that direction. And we can rotate our camera here using the mouse. So we have a very nice third person movement. So now let's create the jumping FSM. I'm going to select the player game object again, and I'm going to create a new FSM. And for this FSM, I'm going to call this jump. And for the first state, I'm going to use the get button down action. And for the button, I'm going to set this to jump. And I'm going to create a new event for send event. And let's just call this jump. And add the transition jump. And there is a neat trick here. If you hold control while dragging the transition, it will automatically create a new state. So I'm going to create this new state here. And let's just call this start jump. And for the first state, I'm going to call this on ground. And I'm going to add a set velocity action to the start jump state. And I'm going to set the Y value to around seven and set the space to world. And here I want to use the get velocity action and I want to record the y velocity here. So I'm going to create a new variable for the y component here. And let's just call this y speed and enable every frame. And basically I want to compare the y speed float variable using the float compare. And for the first float, I'm going to set this to the y speed here and I'm going to put this down below here. And I want to compare if the Y speed value is less than zero, meaning that the character is falling down and I want to go to the next state. So I'm going to create a new event here under the less than event. And let's just create a new event and let's just call this fall and make sure every frame is checked. And we need to add the fall transition. And by holding control, let's create a new state here. And let's just call this fall or falling and I'm going to add a new finish transition and here inside the falling I'm going to use the get velocity again and I'm going to get the Y velocity again here enable the every frame but this time I'm going to use the float multiply and I'm going to multiply the Y speed by 1.1 so the Y speed will be faster when it's falling and make sure every frame is checked here. And then we want to use the set velocity action and reapply the Y position that we have multiplied here into the Y component of the set velocity action and set the space to world and make sure every frame is checked. And this will create a snappier jump like most of the platformer games otherwise we will have a very floaty jump and here i'm going to add a collision event and on enter i want to go to finish event here so let's just pick finish event and we don't need to set a tag collision so it will detect on any game object when the character lands so if finish then we want to go back to the first state here okay so for the animation here it's quite simple actually. On the start jump, we want to trigger the animation. So let's just add the set animator boolean. And for the game object, we want to pick the child game object. And we want to change the grounded boolean parameter. And when we start to jump, we want to set this to false. And I'm going to copy this action. And when we land here on the on ground state, we want to paste this action here. and set the value to true so whenever we land on an object then we want to set the grounded to true and now if we press play you see that we will be able to jump there you go 
So now we have a very nice third person character movement using Playmaker and it's quite easy to implement actually. Okay, so I'm going to add an environment to give a feel for this character when moving around on the level. I'm going to change a bit of the camera settings here on the Cinemation controller. So I'm going to increase the radius size. And now I'm going to disable the cube here. And I'm going to drag the environment that I've already import here under the Dream Forest tree. So I'm going to drag the terrain to the scene here. And now we have this very nice terrain. And I'm going to adjust the scene here. So now I finished set up the environment here. Let's press play and give it a try. And now as you can see, we have a very nice character movement. And we can move around the environment here. Okay, so thanks a lot for watching. And if you like this tutorial, hit that like button and do subscribe. And don't forget to press those notification button. So you will get notification if I upload a new video in this channel.